Hi, my name is Esben and uh, welcome to this introduction to Geographic Information Systems and what I've called Spatially Enabled Applications. Um, to be honest, there are many definitions of what a Geographic Information System is. I subscribe to one of them, namely this one that says that a GIS is the organized use of computer-based services that can collect, store, retrieve, analyze and visualize geodata in order to collect and generate and or disseminate information about a world of observation. Well, if you can't remember what a world of observation is, what's the video about geodata again? But basically what it says is that so these services that is something that can do, do something for you. So there is something that can store data, that is something that can visualize data. All of this as elements that operate within some specific uh, purpose. So you might say that based on this definition of GIS, a GIS is something that people groups of people create in order to achieve a specific goal. They can be specific goals such as a rainwater management GIS that is designed to analyze, visualize data about how we can manage rainwater in a local area. It can also be of a more general purpose such as ensure that students and employees can do the analysis they need to do in order to do their job research and study. So that's maybe probably one of the most broad ones. Um, but if that is a GIS, so the GIS is something that has a purpose, What what is that application that we are using when we work with GIS. Isn't that called a GIS? Yeah well, yeah, sometimes we by accident call it the GIS and maybe that accident is something that comes of historical reasons where the software for working with data was very specialized software, very complex, um, very expensive. So you could have a piece of software that could work with data and nothing else. And that was then called a GIS also. Um, today there's lots of applications that can work with geodata. Google Earth. Um, even Excel can make maps. But no one would call them a GIS. So I prefer not to use the term GIS about any application. I use, would prefer to use the term spatially enabled application. So any software that can work with geodata is a spatially enabled application. And I don't make any distinction between advanced packages like ArcGIS that really can do all of the things more or less and then limited packages such as Google Earth or Excel that can only do deliver some of the services that you need in order to have a GIS. So the thing that you work with that's a spatially enabled application together with a goal and some data and all those other things then we talk about a GIS. If you look a bit closer at the applications that you work with that thing you might call the operational layer of um, the GIS the things where things are done there are different types, categories you wish. You can have local applications, things that are installed on your hard drive, um, ArcGIS, QGIS, Google Earth, etc. So they are software that is installed on your computer and that delivers services such as analyzing um, data or visualizing data directly to you on your computer. There's also applications that are installed on web servers. So we access them through a web browser. They also deliver services to us. 
that can analyze, visualize, collect data different. Some of the most um, common use of some examples I'd like to give here is in um, Denmark we have a, um, a web application which is called Mujur Portal which give uh, so the environmental portal which gives access to um, quite a lot of environmental data but also quite a lot of general planning data for Denmark. So if we just have a look at uh, this application for a moment. Um, so Milieu Portal looks something like this. We have a web address up here. You see we are I'm in Firefox. I have a series of uh, of themes. I have a map and I have some tools up in the corner. I'll um, just try and do a zoom in on the campus area. So let me see if I can do that reasonably quick. Um, so, so here we have the university campus railroad station, so on. And we can then see, okay, do I uh, what type of information is available about it? Or about this area here. So I can look for boreholes. What type of boreholes do we have uh, in this area? So we have, and I can have all of the other ones also here. So we have different boreholes, and I can have information if I go to uh, the Jupyter database. I can then collect, have a detailed information about soil depths, which type of geological layers that were encountered when that hole was uh, bored. I can also look for uh, something like soil pollutants. So what type of soil pollutants do we have? There are different categories here. Let's uh, activate the least dangerous one of them. So we can see there are areas within the university campus that are registered as being pollutant. So these are some of the environmental data, but it also has lots of planning data. Um, so I can look for um, planning restrictions uh, in the area. I see what type of planning restrictions are here. So here we have a map of all the areas covered by different plans. And I can then, if I go to my tools, I can ask for a tool and I can have give me information and I can then click on one of these and it will go out and uh, search for information search, 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 okay so here we have a local plan let's take the one that covers the solid area um, it has details about it and I can even download it so thank you and Read so here we have the local plan. We have the campus, and then we can browse through and see if um, the university is developed as or is developing as it is set out in this plan here. So that's milieu protein. It's is this a GIS? It is at least a spatially enabled application. It can handle spatial data. It can handle it can deliver services, it can make maps, I can make queries, I can ask which plans are in order this place. So, yes, this is a spatially enabled service. Um, Google Maps, you should try it. It's um, If you log in, you can also create your own maps. It's not just displaying maps, you can put in your own data. Another one I want to show you now is a search service. So what is that then? Um, going back here to uh, my web browser. So this is our data portal and we can search for different data. Um, what data do we have access to or which data can you download from somewhere? So uh, what do we have on elevation? And we can then find some elevation data. Um, we can um, do a search criteria, let's say, what 
what data do I have in uh, this area down here? Or which area do I have on, what data do I have on Australia? No, not really very much. Um, however, if I uh, zoom in and say, uh, what data do I have around Denmark? You will see that I have quite a lot of data around Denmark available. Um, and uh, I can even take some of the data here yeah, and I, I can say okay here we have blue spots so that's information about where water would gather in the severe water a rain incidents and I can then add it to a map and see what is that data I can go up and look at the map and here we can see the blue spot information um, and I can then add this, if I say, okay, this is the data I want to work with, I can then add it to, for instance, a application installed on my local computer. So they are web services. They're not something that's installed on my desktop computer. It's something that's running on some web server somewhere. And I can then access this and do processing of geographic data there. There's, of course, also more simple services, such as file services, at the university, we have a server called geodata.dk, and uh, on that, sorry, we can um, locate. So here, that's geodata. See up here, my address field, geodata.dk, and I can then go in and see, okay, national data, and Denmark, and uh, let's see some administrative data, and we have addresses. We have some metadata and odds and ends of geodata available as files. Going back to uh, here, we had um, our, um, our the final type of um, service available is data services. Data services are something that we're not, you know, we don't use them in general um, as individuals, but they are some a way of giving access to a service from one application to another. We can uh, look at an example of this by starting QGIS. So we are starting a local application, and I will then use that to access the data that we saw before, these blue spot data, from a server our data the university data server and we'll see how that functions so we'll start QGIS and wait so once QGIS has started I can go in QGIS and I can ask for a specific type of service in this case I'll be asking for VMS services, web map services. So I'm asking QGIS to start and look for VMS. I have already entered the data for this service provider here. So I have at campus, we have this service provider. I can connect to it and I can then go in and look for data on it. So it have some auto photos, some elevation data, some topographical data. I'll look for elevation data. I'll look for Denmark. I will uh, expand this bit and uh, I'll then look for my blue spot data so up here. So this is my blue spot data set. It's nothing, no data that I have on my computer or any file I have access to it directly. But I'll add it and what's happened now is that my QGIS application has asked another service to deliver this data. It's not any data that's stored locally it's accessed through the web and I can uh, then choose to zoom in on uh, an area and we will then see our blue spot data as before so again uh, it's this is an example of a data service so one application is calling another application on our service saying 
and provide me with some information. In this case, it is a VMS service, so it is a map that is the result of this request. If you try and sum up some of these talks about geodata and GIS and whatever, I made this a uh, free tier model of a GIS. If you remember from the lecture note about geodata, we talked about that when we collect geodata or when geodata is created, we have an ontology that we apply to our world of observation and by applying that ontology it, this will result in entities so roads, buildings, lakes etc and property spaces so that is area in which a property varies such as blue spots that is a property how much water will gather or elevation what is the elevation in Denmark, they are property spaces or surfaces if you wish, if they are just a surface. Um, the next tier is the controlling tier. So we have what we might call the institutional framework. With regards to what you can do and can't do, which dates to collect and so on, or the university by nature doesn't set any restrictions. So go out and do your research. Um, if the institution you are working for was a municipality, they would probably have some well-defined ontologies. So they would define what was a park, what is a flower bed in a park, and so on. So they would probably have some ontologies that were defined by the institutional framework. They would probably also have some analytical framework, what were you allowed to do, which type of analysis is part of your work. Again here the university will probably won't set many restrictions on what type of analysis you can do. But what the controlling framework also does is it controls which services you have access to. This search um, service or university search service for instance is only available if you have if you are at campus or you have a VPN connection to campus. So only if you are a student or employee at university do you have access to these services. So most of the restrictions to what services you have access to is controlled by the institutional framework. We pay some annual fee to ESRI so that we can use ArcMap. So, but we don't want to give it to everyone in the world. So only if you are within the university framework that, or the institutional framework of the university do you have access to ArcMap. So this third part of our GIS, that is where all those services, this is the operational part of the digital tier. So here we have services for doing analysis, services for doing visualization, services for storing and retrieving data, and search management services, so finding the data such as this um, search uh, uh, application I showed you before. So this is basically what a overall discussion of what GIS is. Hopefully we are, can agree on now that the GIS is something that people groups of people do in order to achieve a goal and those things that we sit up at using we will call them spatially enabled applications so thank you for now see you later bye